Okay. Hello to everybody. Um, my name is Vincent Ho. It's an honor to be here uh, hosting this weekly contact news session for OpenOS. Uh, by the way, for folks who live in the United States, you guys are satisfied with the results of midterm election? Well, anyhow. <laughs> Life like a chocolate box of chocolates, like it or not, we move on, right? Okay, so I came to the first uh, part of our session as usual. Then I see we have some new faces, some new attendees to, to open with. So, first, welcome. Uh, first, would you mind? Would you, uh, I think Victor, this is the first time uh, you joined this session? Uh, yes. Okay, could you please introduce yourself a little bit uh, regarding what we are doing in terms of uh, for open work and what you are up to now? Thank you. Oh, sure. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Victor, and I'm a grad student at uh, USC, University of Southern California. And, well, what... Um, uh, so, I guess for my thesis, um, I'm looking into, I guess our group is uh, focusing on real-time computing in the cloud. So at least for my thesis, I'm looking into um, how to, I'm basically what, what I'm, my goal right now is just to look, uh, look into how to um, apply um, this real-time components into OpenWhisk. So for the act actual work, I haven't done anything, but I'm just looking into uh, what are the opportunities I can um, contribute to OpenWhisk. Uh, nice, awesome. Welcome to this open source family. And uh, you can, well, you know, we have uh, this technical meeting, as you know, every other week. And uh, we have plenty of ways to uh, communicate with the folks over here, with other brains. Uh, we have dev lists, we have Slack channels. Uh, mm -hmm. And yeah, we, we actually, uh, it's a good, it's a, such a nice ecosystem in open source for serverless platform. So, welcome. Oh, thanks. So, okay. Uh, I think we can move on to the next. Uh, topic. Uh, we can have like chronic folks to give an update to their notable changes. I think I can go first. Um, as I present, uh, no, sorry, updated during the last meetings, I will work on the package refactor. Well, so like we change to we can uh from our whisk path to org.apache.openwisk. So this is, a, this is a change of the naming conventions in order to conform the Apache policies in order to hit the next release, for example, 1.0 or even above. And uh, I have made quite some programs for the Java runtime. I think I already had PR open there. And the PR open for OpenWorks as well. Uh, ask some nice folks, uh, Carlos and James, to help me review it, and uh, we keep. Uh, I think we made pretty good progress. And some other changes I see uh, is we have updates of a uh, version update of programming language everywhere. As as I, as far as I see, uh, we have updated our Scala to 2.12, I think thank uh, Chantal, thank uh, Carlos, uh, Michelle, folks uh, for working on that. So it looks like oh, we have all the green check marks in Travis. And also see uh, our Go language has been upgraded to at least from 1.8 to 1.9. Because we have, uh, we see both of the errors uh, happened in CLI and with the deploy as well, if we do not do this, upgrade from eight to nine, then our dependency will fail to do the compiling. So that's how it, how it can play it out. So uh, any other 
changes. So Fox would like to chime in, would like to add. Um, yeah, for that one, it might be good to create an issue if somebody like, um, um, what do we call it like first, like low, long hanging fruit, good first issue. Um, maybe somebody wants to contribute, like looking into what would it take to upgrade to, to use 1.11. And this is for the WCLI CLI and the WIS deploy. So just, I just thought yeah. about you mention it. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a good exercise because you know, I tried that before. Ooh, it really pops up with some strange errors. So I yeah. just so far stay with 1.9, which is kind of a safe zone for us at this moment. So in general, it's, it's good to just when, when, you, when we have, in general for all repos, just um, when we have things like this, just open an issue and let's use a label first, uh, first, first good issue. It, or I think GitHub has one by default, I don't remember right now, but we can discuss it in the many leaves on Slack. Um, I can go over a few um, notable changes in the main repo. I cannot share for some reason, I don't know why, but, um, but uh, from the last two weeks, like you said, um, for people watching this, maybe in a video, uh, if you have errors with Scala, it's probably because uh, you're using 2.11 instead of 2.12.7. Um, the other change uh, that I see in the main ro main repo is uh, Christian did a, a merge about activation um, acts of coming from the invoker. So now there's two messages coming back, one with the result and then the second one when the invoker is done with the logs. Um, I... <laughs> Uh, I've been working with Michelle on adding the Go runtime. Uh, we touch. Um, I think we, with only the only PR missing or that I'm going to review and merge is the website. But other than that, uh, Go 1.11 is a it's a it's a default runtime being deployed in in the main repo in Ansible in um, uh, Dev Tools and Kubernetes. Um, so now you can do dash dash kind Go 1.11 and then you can do Go. Um, and there's good examples in there to compile with vendor folder or compile uh, without it. Um, so there's uh, make files that make that easy. Um, I'm I'm using it, and um, I really like I really like uh, the support for that. Um, and only one more repo. Let me see. I'm looking in through the core repo uh, since October 25. Uh, Sven did a contribution on adding more. Uh, metrics for the invoker to get more granular information about um, failures, um, command failures or timeouts for when we would do a Docker run or a Docker pause or those Docker CLI commands, sometimes they failed or they have a failure or they time out. So we, having those metrics would uh, help anyone running in production to on high, high scale to see those kind of like uh, errors showing up. But um, it's something that he wanted to get more metrics and, and I, uh, I think it's good. Um, I think um, that's it and the, all, the, all the repos were, were touched because of the Scala. And I think the next one will be Vincent's PR to change the packages. Um, so if you want to avoid something like that, ping to a hash or ping to the release that we did .9. Uh, for the runtimes, I think I mentioned Go. For Kubernetes, I don't know if Dave is around and wants to give an update, or maybe we'll leave it at the end, but he's doing a lot of uh, Helm refactoring um, to make it best uh, best practices, uh, to make it make it a Helm chart and make it in the repository. Um, but that's that's what I have so far. Yeah, absolutely. For uh, some, I think some company or parties already using the existing version, existing release of OpenWorth. Uh, so, p please be aware that we are going to conduct a major change in the act of packet refactoring to the open world repositories. So, uh, based on our experience, <laughs> it definitely will influence uh, how you deploy and how you uh, import and depend uh, on some certain libraries. So, be aware of that. That could be a major impact or kind of inf influence on your existing deployments. So, get ready for that change. Yeah, functionality doesn't change, so don't be scared. <laughs> it's just refactor of the imports, um, depending how you're importing the package. So it's whisk, now it's openwhisk.org, um, openwhisk, apache.org. Yeah, even sometimes how we uh, locate and find, uh, find the dependencies, some classes yeah. may be missing, so due to- We get compile errors, this kind of. Yeah.
Um, but but again, um, reach out, open issues, open a dev list, Slack, if you have questions, uh, we can help what, because Vincent have gone through our downstream, um, I've, I've done the refactoring. Yeah, thanks for that. Okay, yeah, I can touch on Kube really quickly if you want. Um, so as Carla sure. said, I've been doing some work recently to refactor the Helm charts to sort of comply with all the Helm best practices. Um, and that, that work's being driven both to try to, to get the charts to be more standardized and also to get, to get them in, in a shape where they could be used for production deployments. Um, we've also had several new users uh, picking up the Kubernetes deployment over with in the last couple of weeks and giving yeah. feedback on the documentation, uh, finding things that are wrong with it, uh, running into problems I hadn't seen before. And so that's driven a lot of the, the Docker organization and other small fixes that have happened as people kicking the tires, finding things where they're a little bit, a little bit uh, rough still and helping us improve that. So definitely, you know, if you're, if you're listening to this, uh, thank you. And, and uh, you know, keep those kind of changes coming. That definitely helps things uh, become easier for everyone to use. Yeah, I agree. I'm, I'm super happy to see folks from, from everywhere <laughs> uh, opening issues. Like now, I think last night somebody opened an issue of a indentation in YAML. I'm still not a fan of YAML, but I think I'll get used to. Um, <laughs> Uh, space was uh, not indented, um, but it was an easy fix. And he did the PR. Uh, I think I approved it, but I was writing for Travis. So you can take a look, Dave. Yep, yep, yeah, I merged that. That actually was a breaking change because space matters. It's one of these. <laughs> <laughs> fine, fine, fine. Okay, means I've shut up now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, unfortunately, uh, based on the email I sent out to the mailing list, uh, asking about uh, any topics we would like to present during this meeting, um, unfortunately, I received none. <laughs> um, I was wondering if folks have anything to update or say about uh, what they're working on for open words or in any aspect. Um. I'm working in the process of adding Node.js 10. Yeah. Um, but uh, at the surface, there's not that many changes. Um, similar as Node.js 8, um, it's more for native API if somebody using something like that. But I think in the in functions or serverless, um, uh, there's not that major major changes. How I'll, I'll do some comparing performance type of performance to see if there's like minor milliseconds in performance uh, i doubt it but I'll, I'll i'll give it a i'll give it some evaluation to that um we need to merge the, the go runtime and then i'm going to start looking into swift 4.2 um i also i think also michelle is going to help me to see if we can make act, uh, swift 4.2 use the action loop and that the benefit for end users will be that then then you can have caching. So if you have a global variable or something loaded in memory, then is the program will run in a loop, and then you, you the performance and the latency will be better. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, um, I think that's it. Uh, the code for the the compiler for uh, the Postgres, sorry, PostSwift is already done. Oh, I cool. have to build it. So uh, a few days, and I should give you to test. The, Py the okay. Python script? Okay, cool. And the yeah, Python script is there. It is in the, in the other repository that oh, I'm yeah. using uh, as a playground. But uh, then I will merge because I have to do something that to put all together. And maybe we move the code to Docker Skeleton as discussed, but this is what we have. Yeah, Docker Skeleton will be the next one to make it loop. Yes. And also that you will have pearls and bash that can loop <laughs> and they don't yeah. exit. And yeah, yep. Yeah. So we'll make yes. it. That's the idea. I think okay, I can, um, Dave, what you're still um, uh, Helm? Is the idea to put it in the official Helm uh, repository or registry or something like that that they have? Um, uh, the idea is to sort of clean it up to comply with the best practices, and then um, at some point we should probably do a release of the Helm chart. Um, ah, but but we should probably uh, maybe we could wait to the next like OpenWisk 1.0 or 9.1 or whatever the next version is and then do a release of that. But 
but basically get the charts all cleaned up uh, so they comply and so they pass linters and sort of hit the community standards. Okay. Um, and by the way, um, we did the, the first batch in, in groups. Um, I think it's okay to do releases of one module. For example, I was going to talk to Michelle to see if it's, um, if it's or on the dev list also, uh, to see if we start doing, we can do a release of the Go, Go repo. Um, yeah, I know that we, uh, we also have like Ruby or Go, so some new uh, runtime repository coming into open with the project. So they can definitely release on their, based on their, yeah. their own, their, based on their own uh, schedules. Yeah, DGC yep. source release, do the voting. Yeah. Um, keep, keep yeah, if, if you, you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or Carlos. Uh, I have once, I once through all the uh, release processes for our modules before. Yep. So any question you can ask me about yep. that. Yep. Yeah. And I'm still, I'm still planning on getting a composer release started relatively soon. I'm waiting for Olivier to get a chance to do one PR he wants to get in first. Good. Okay, good. Is that, which, which PR is that, that part of? Uh, he hasn't written it yet. Um, it's 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 okay. basically the the trivial PR of changing from the IBM functions uh, ah. namespace to the OpenWIST namespace. Ah, it makes sense. Yeah, it's a clean up. Yeah, let's clean up. Yeah. 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 Um, Mar Matt, do you have any updates? Or, or maybe I, I that was maybe a topic I forgot to put in the dev list, Vincent. Uh, can we share this? I don't know how to share. Maybe it's uh, there should be a share button. Yeah, I think I think it's on my Mojave or or the Zoom app is not giving me the button, so I don't want to. Uh, but anyway, um, is I was I was reviewing, I was showing Vincent the the wiki page that has our maturity uh, tables. Um, I think we copied yeah. that from uh, from me. So um, I think Matt created that, and I, I think the idea was to go over that that table. And it's, a, it's about yeah. our graduation. It's about our graduation uh, in yeah. Apache uh, foundations. Yeah. Um, for the most part, when we took a look this week, all all items are yes. We just need to, or we say cross these and put uh, like make sure that we're not missing any of that. But it will be good. Um, if we can start filling that tables with yeses, and then if there's no's or questions stuck in the dev list, how can we can we come uh, satisfy some of those requirements? Um, I know Bertrand, uh, Ping, Jim, um, those those are our mentors in the Apache Foundation. Uh, to see to, to start like that discussion of what are the what are the things missing so we can start start uh, we can we could set that send that email asking for graduation to the I, IPMC um, and basically that email will say that we is we, this the, the chart you're talking about yeah that's the chart basically uh, the the email will be very short basically it's a pointer to this table saying we're mature we're doing all everything. You know, we're, we're doing everything by the Apache Foundation uh, in terms of code, community, licenses, That's like the copyright, yeah. tables in here. And then we can say also point to the releases that we have done and voted on. Um, and I think that's it. No one should reject us from graduating. Um, so yeah. um, it'd be a good Christmas gift, at least for me, we graduate this year. <laughs> um, but um, Maybe my expectations are too high. Um, yes, this is generally like a kind of requirements, including all the bullets. I mean, I, I'll, I mean I'm, I'm happy to fill it out. I guess that in, in, in my mind, I was hesitating because um, I, I'm really still concerned about um, participation, um, a good, healthy community. We talked about the three legged stool, and we have three legs in terms of three companies, but um, that's, don't be a problem. Participation has been down the past few months. I don't yeah. know how Apache Foundation is going to view the uh, proposed acquisition of Red Hat. So, so, and then Keynative has dropped a big bomb on us. And so I think, people, you know, we're taking a step back to figure out, you know, how we, how we position ourselves with Keynative. I think that's been a concern from both IBM's point of view and Red Hat's. And so I, I, I don't know if I, I don't know without having that, um, plan or that st those statements or those figured out by our community, how we can actually, you know, in good conscience move towards graduation. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I'm happy to hear from the Apache, you know, IPMC, 
computer to see what they think. But um, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't have concerns. I think this maturity has um, a lot of items, like forty-five items. Um, so we we can start filling the thing, and the the one item yeah. that maybe so, points so out. Let me clear off. I mean, I, I have no doubt when I created this that I can go through and fill, finish filling it out. Yep. And, and I'll promise you personally, Carlos, I will, I'll work to do that. Hopefully a bit of this week. But uh, the role that is concerning to you, we can, that's, that's the thing that we need to discuss in the depth. That's what, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, yeah, I mean, all I mean, the roles I, can be say yes, and there's a role that says community uh, or engagement or whatever it's your concern, then we can discuss it in depth at least. Yeah, all, um, all, all the, you know, all the um, deterministic items, all the check mark items, I think we've done all, all of them, but I agree with what you said. And that's what, that's what Vincent and my team has been trying to do since all this year. Yeah. But it's um, these ambiguous, indeterministic things with the yeah. health of the community, I can't, I can't gauge. And I just, yeah. I just, you know, I feel participation has been down since Canada was announced and we've had this indecision about what our direction is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, the, that's a topic for the deaf list. So everything discussed in the deaf list. Yeah. Um, it, it there uh, Apache Apache Foundation has large projects, has small projects. Um, I think um, things change in the future. Um, next year could be something else. In two years could be something else. Yeah. Um, but the code that it sits right there, I think, is good. It's stable. Um, people are using it. Uh, people are contributing. Um, I think, regardless of other also open source projects um, or acquisitions, I think um, somebody needs to tell me. A reason why we cannot get away because of that. I I would say me as a committer and member of the Apache community, I would say I want to graduate, and somebody needs to tell me why not. Um, and put put me and put me something in front of me that says you cannot get away because you have to do X and Y, and then we'll say okay, I will do X and Y, or I'm missing X and Y. Well, I mean, I'll, I would not, I'll, I'll say I'll yeah. say one one thing that I would say is no. Is is private playgrounds? It's all private, private, private playgrounds. Yep. And and this today we got the infra gave us the VMs, and I'm going to run a Jenkins Hello World, and then I cross that issue, and then we just need to um, create a Jenkins job to deploy a distributed thing so we can do playgrounds there. Cool. That's good news. That's, that's an infra. That's an infra item. Like IPMC would not. IPMC the IPMC would not tell me no because of PGs. Right. No, the, the, I, mean, I think a lot of things will fall beneath their notice. Yep. Uh, but you know, we're the stewards as you know, being part of PPMC. So. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's a good discussion. I'll let, I'll let you talk offline about the the, the playgrounds. So I'm curious to see what you're doing. So I'll, I'll yeah, yeah, I can put I can put something in the dev list, and we can we can talk about that. And actually, I'm I'm looking for volunteers because I don't. I may not have the bandwidth uh, to create the Jenkins job, so um, I will ask for help to see. Who uh, I, mean, I, I think that Vincent's aware that you know he and I spoke about after he's done with this this renaming and uh, refactoring, that I asked him to look at um, what was cited by by the product team as they there's still a set of tests, small set of tests that I have some pointers to that need to be moved to open still. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, but we have Jenkins and we just got the VMs um, this week, I think. They ping us back the host names. Cool. Um, but I didn't cross the issue because I knew, uh, not that I don't trust them, it's just I need to test them to see if they're like connected to Jenkins and they work. Right, cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're making progress. I mean, I, I, I'm doing all, all I can to move forward. You, <laughs> Carlos, you are the champion for the project, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I definitely uh, be helping uh, Carlos with those playground builds um, that we can deploy on top of the VM. We just require for Apache. Yeah. yeah. So, but the idea is like to do the easy part. Do the easy way first. Do it with with Ansible, um, and then uh, look into how do we repurpose those VMs to to do it with cube, um, but yeah, just my, that's just an idea of, that I have of. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I thought, you know, actually in my mind, I thought that we wait for the, you know, since Helm is serving to be quite, you know, the, the quite easy to use. Yeah. And configure but if it's going to block my graduation, I'll do answer, well, we'll do both at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> you told me that something's blocking me in my graduation, so. 
fair enough. Yeah, I think I think uh, we yeah we requested these VMs long ago, long ago, um, but now we got them. Cool. Okay, okay. that's awesome. This is actually, yeah, some nice discussions. So, about, was, so can I just? I mean, I don't know, if this is a good point point in the agenda, Vincent, could I have a few minutes to provide some updates? Vincent, can I provide yeah. some other updates? Okay. Um, first of all, thanks to Michele, Mich Michele and Carlos for, for getting the WIS deploy to accept and acknowledge the Go runtime. Thanks, to that, thanks for that. And um, uh, I will let you know that Pretty is finishing up this week, uh, adding WIS deploy manifest for all the catalog packages. So those should be up for review and she'll post to the dev list when, she's, when those things are ready for review. Um, in terms of, of my team, and I've shared this with anybody who's asked or had a chance to speak to you, but I might as well state it here, is that my team is, once we you know, finalize these last few items and help with playgrounds and, and getting these tests in the open, that uh, I think that actually we'll start next week with pretty um, helping Dave and my team and entire team will start moving over to help Dave and Coob. Um, what we want to do is what Dave uh, has dubbed developer simple workflows, and I also say operator enablement. Um, we want to we want to basically make sure all the providers are ported over, and you have ways of optionally adding providers um, in whatever configurations you want, and have great outstanding documentation. I've already started pointing um, the main website, updating the documentation. I'll have some PRs today um, to point to Kube more prominently, um, and, and to encourage people to use Docker Desktop uh, for Mac for Windows and, and Mini Kube. Um, and move in that direction. And the message for me is basically you know, create top notch doc documentation to make people know that you know, we are a Kubernetes compatible project and that feature Kubernetes and, and shift our development resources towards Kubernetes. So um, we, can, we can position ourselves perhaps to then you know, continue what we did on our, our design proposals to, to make sure that we can are compatible with Knative as well. Um, then we'll work on ELK stack and monitoring. We're going to try to create some services. Um, initially, we're going to start and maybe even create a, a management dashboard. And I heard from Dave that we might get, get some other resources soon. So we'll coordinate through Dave all of our all of our work in, in, within IBM. And we'll, we'll anything we have but in terms of proposals or stuff, we'll see the, all in the public in the dev list and SPRs. Uh, we'll probably start with the couch um, provider and try to make that top notch. We need to probably make some recommendations for persistent volumes, your options for configuring different types of persistent volumes. We'd love to have you work out a memory local file system first, and also how to configure dedicated uh, things so you don't lose your, uh, lose your configuration sometimes. Um, and we'll move on and carry the documentation, the template, if you will, from Couch to the other providers, and make sure all they, they're fully tested and things like that, and Travis Winkins. And then we want the LK will pick default um, default implementations out of the box implementations and give instructions how to add others. And then maybe along the way we'll document the SPIs and things. So we'll see how that goes. So those are my plans for the next six months, my team. Yeah. I'm happy to hear that um, um, some love for the cube repo and testing. That's something I talked to Dave and they've started a little bit of running that CI C D deploy open with on cube and then run run the tests on, on top on top of it. So if somebody changes a helm charge or changes a configuration, we in the PR we know we can catch those early. And and looking long longer term, um, there's a use case that is getting traction internally and I guess I spoke to Adobe and it has traction in Adobe that's about federation. It's about how do you federate between public Open WISC, private Open WISC, and perhaps Open WISC installed in, in a Kubernetes service. How do you federate your application? Um, ah, I, so I have I, some ideas around WISC deploy that I have some issues open for that we might work on as well. Yeah, I think uh, WISC deploy and Dave, people from Dave's team did some work around that for IoT, right? So if you have a you have Open WISC running in my my house here in a, in a box next to the TV, those actions are federated on the yep. cloud and locally. Yeah. Yep. 
once we have some designs baked, which will hopefully be sometime soon, I'll post them on the on the wiki. Good, good. See, there's contributions. There's people working on this stuff. What are you talking about? <laughs> Sure, it's definitely a nice, a great contribution <laughs> to the community. Yeah, and if you want to do a brain dump of that list, or you have it somewhere, you can. You're free to put it in a wiki list or a wiki page, or and then as as they they formulate, you can start doing a dev list. But it, it's good to to have a pointer that that to do list that you have in your that you just described somewhere. Okay, good. So, anybody else have something common to add? I don't know. Updates from the other companies. Anyone from Adobe or Red Hat on what they're what's hot on their side? If not, we can adjourn. There's no one from Red Hat mm. or Adobe. Marcus, did you want to explain your your role at? And your change in your life? Are you still there? Marcus, Marcus, are you there? You are on mute. Yeah, I chatted. Marcus is the first person to join me. Yeah, I chatted. He must have been. He said he might want to reintroduce himself. So, but maybe he'll do that in the future. <laughs> All right, we're well, the moderator for, so I guess I'm gonna, so I think that the next logical calendar date we'd meet would be November 21st. However, that is a, that is right the day before US holiday. Oh uh, yeah, that's kidding. Yeah. So I would propose that we cancel the, that iteration and then that would move us to, what is it, December? You should meet in that last game of four weeks. December 5th? Release or or do it the twenty eighth. Ah, wait. I'm looking. Yeah, either November. To, what you what you propose? I'm sorry. I, I'm I would talking. just propose skipping that iteration and going to the to the to the fifth. Yeah. Okay. Like December the fifth. December the fifth in four weeks. And and I'll volunteer to to host it. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. I was about to hit on that uh, volunteer work. Okay, yep, thank you, Matt. So thank you so much. Thanks everybody for attending this bi-weekly meeting. You guys have sorry. a wonderful day. I'm very sorry for it. Uh, I have one question. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, um, I'm just curious about this next gen architect, the progress of the next gen architecture. Or like maturity model the, I just shared. Uh, sorry, can you repeat that? Do, do you mean the uh, maturity uh, model I shared on this page? No, no, he means oh, no, the, no, not the. No, so, we have, we have, so basically all we have right now is, is you have to go back to our meeting minutes. It's uh, paper where. And there's no one working on it. There's no one actively working on it right now. Um, uh -huh. There's a lot of things. I think we split up to our separate. We had we shared some things that are on our project wiki. Um, yep. If you need those references, you can ping me. Um, I'm happy to meet, you know, privately to give you to give me my thoughts. But in general, we just have a lot of things we're doing. Um, you know, Kube enablement is basically trumping a lot of things. Just being enabled on Kube. Before we actually can, you know, effectively have a have everybody on the same page, uh, so we can actually start exploring these things. Um, and so, uh, Vic, Victor, if you if you, it sounds like you want to uh, contribute on that. Sorry, I was away uh, for a while. Um, if you want to contribute on the uh, on that future architecture, I'm uh, Roger and I had a chat last week on uh, where we could where we could um, push this, and I kind of left it hanging. Uh, Midair, and I'm planning to um, facilitate contributions on on the uh, next gen architecture, like in the in the near term future. 
So if you want to contribute there, uh, feel free to hit me up in either a public channel or privately, like you like you want to. And then let's discuss how we can move it forward. Okay, sure, yeah, thanks. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely uh, keep in touch with you. Cheers. Yeah, right, thank you. Uh, I, I think that would be good. And if you're looking for things to research, like you mentioned, you were doing thesis, uh, Marcus can give you good things to research and try things. Yeah. Right, cool, cool. Thank you. Thank you so yeah, much. For, for, for disclosure, I, I won't be able to implement anything from yep. most probably, but uh, I kind of want to um, be a little bit more active again in the community in terms of uh, mentoring these bits yep. and, and uh, facilitating contributions. So let's see where we can get that. That's great news, Marcus. Thanks. Exactly. Yeah, that's very good news, Marcus. And you see that that could be the new role uh, that Marcus is doing. <laughs> he just introduced that. <laughs> Okay, anybody has any other questions? Otherwise, we call it a day. Okay, so thank you so much for attending this bi weekly meetings. So, I'll see you next time. Yep, keep in touch. Bye. See you guys.